Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Limbach, producer of the Pharma Voice Webcast Network, and I'll be your moderator today. Welcome to our event entitled Building a Secure Automated Quality System to Accelerate Time to Market, brought to you by Pharma Voice in partnership with our good friends at DocuSign. We have an outstanding crowd today with executives from across the industry. Thank you for investing the time to attend. We'll certainly do our very best to make it worth your while. We have a very knowledgeable tandem of experts with us today to help us understand how new technology can improve R&D processes, saving time and money. I'll provide you with some background on our panelists. First, we have Kevin Clark, Manager, Global Clinical Operations, PMO, at Boston Scientific. Kevin has 14 years of global functional experience in finance treasury, business process redesign, technology deployment, strategy design, project management, and Lean Six Sigma. Kevin also has experience supporting businesses worldwide in the US, Europe, Latin America, and AMEA at Boston Scientific, as well as at previous places of employment. Kevin's joined by Siona Iverson, Product Marketing Manager at DocuSign. Siona leads customer success for industries, including the healthcare and life science verticals. Siona's diverse marketing background includes leading B2B marketing programs for the advertising technology platform Turn Inc., now a Mobi. Previously, she drove awareness strategy for global telecom and financial service brands at advertising agencies in New York and Chicago. Based on the excellent turnout today, this is clearly an area of interest, and based on our esteemed panel, it promises to be an extremely informative session. I am i know I'm definitely looking forward to it. Kevin is going to start off the presentation segment, and after the presentation, we'll dive into Q&A. Kevin, you have the floor. Great, thanks, Dan. Um, so I'm happy to be here today to share every with everyone Boss Science, Boss Scientific DocuSign story. Um, over the course of this presentation, I'll provide you with a high-level overview of who Boss Scientific is. Um, we'll take a look into our quality system and why it's such a key to of success to Boss Scientific. Um, walk you through our DocuSign journey and then leave you all with some best practices and lessons learned. All right, does that sound good? Um, we can move to the next one, very good. So our commitment to advancing patient care is evident in our investment in scientific research and discovery. Each year, more than 24 million patients around the globe are treated with Boston Scientific products. We invest nearly $1 billion annually in research and development and have received over 19,000 patents on innovative medical technology. Through our currently 128 active clinical trials, we translate scientific innovation to improved clinical care. Um, so there's a, a bunch of numbers on this slide, so let's put some of it into perspective a little bit. We take this, these, the number of patients that we impact. Um, every 1.3 seconds, someone around the world is receiving a BSC product or is touched by a BSC product. Um, that means that 2,769 people will be treated during this, the course of this webinar. So if we look at our operational um, environment, um, we have commercial representation in approximately 125 countries, 27,000 employees span 137 sites worldwide, 43% uh, of our sales come from outside of the U.S. Um, we have a world headquarters located here in Marlboro, Massachusetts, with regional headquarters in Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, in addition, we have open facilities in India and Malaysia, supporting the continued global growth of Boston Scientific and allowing us to better serve the needs of physicians and patients worldwide. Um, and then finally, we have begun to um, open institutes of advancing science locations around the world. These provide us with the capability to offer healthcare professionals hands-on multidisciplinary training programs for our products and procedures. So next, I want to talk about our quality system. Um, so for those of you not familiar with a quality system, um, what it is, it's, it's the system that is made up of different processes and standards that Boss Scientific follows in order to design, build, distribute, 
and monitor medical device and combination products. Uh, a functioning quality system ensures products meet customer expectations. Uh, the quality system includes checks which ensure quality, patient safety, and continuous improvement of our products. Um, so, functioning quality system, um, again, ensures products meet our customers' expectations. Um, as a whole, the quality system ensures that both domestic and international regulations and standards are satisfied and customer requirements, again, are met. Um, some of the processes and activities that are included within our, our quality system, it's, it's very broad. Um, so sales and marketing would be considered within our quality system. Um, activities such as sales training, um, complaint input, and customer requirements. Um, and trade shows uh, would, would fall under those categories. Uh, the more obvious sections, such as manufacturing processes and distribution processes, um, are heavily controlled and moderated by our quality system. Um, our post-market spaces, um, so if we have preventative actions and field action um, and complaint handling um, would also be a subset of our quality system. And then finally, our global processes, so our quality processes, um, anything from a corporate compliance perspective, as well as uh, management reviews and CAPA. Um, the, the Boston Scientific Quality System directly addresses our belief that every employee impacts the quality of patient care. It really is at the center of our business. So when we introduce products, you know, we are ensuring that they are not only compliant, with our quality system, but also that they don't disrupt the current system that we have. Good. So why DocuSide is really the big question. Um, and we had two main considerations for, for leveraging DocuSign, leveraging a electronic signature platform. Uh, the first being the FDA's guidance on Part 11 compliance. Um, which most of you are probably familiar with, but if you are not, it's uh, guidance that defines the criteria under which electronic records and electronic signatures are considered trustworthy, reliable, and equivalent to paper records. So now we have the capability to use technology um, to obtain signatures as opposed to um, getting hard handwritten wet signatures. Um, the second really was um, one of those continuous improvement opportunities for our quality system. Uh, previously, we had been leveraging uh, Microsoft Outlook, our email um, platform for a lot of our approvals. Um, many are probably in that boat where you've got a number of emails going back and forth and, and finally get approval. Um, we wanted to beef up that system. Um, we found that there's some exposure risk for us. Um, so we wanted to, you know, basically use the, the new Part 11 guidance as well as a more controlled environment um, to, for, to introduce an electronic signature platform. Um, you know, we, we vetted several different solutions, um, but found that DocuSign not only provided the technology, technological options that we required, but it also provides the strongest support system as well. And throughout this presentation, I'll touch more on what you know, makes that support system so strong and what the keys are. So if we look at, okay, now we, we've identified why we want to bring DocuSign in. Now the question is where, right? So what we did was we basically did a risk assessment across our quality system. And we want to identify where are those areas that have the highest risk, right? And we broke the risk out into three categories, so high, medium, and low. High risk is something that would cause harm to, to patients, and there's no correction possible, right? So by the time it was caught, it was, it's too late. Um, it also could be something that had significant impact on our business operations for an extended period of time. Medium risk is the next level down where we get this probability that a, an error could cause harm to patients, but if 
failure is likely to be able to correct it. So we can go and, and um, modify that. Uh, business operation um, impact is, is minimal, right? So so there might be some, but it's it's you know a day or two, uh, and then low, no patient harm, um, and limited to to no um, business operation impact. So some examples, right? So when we talk about kind of that, the high versus the low. So when we looked at high risk, some of the areas that fill out, which um, uh, uh, you know is probably similar to to those in the webinars with their experiences. So manufacturing batch records, right? Really kind of um, device traceability, um, as well as patient records, right? So it's definitely an area where we want to ensure complete accurate. Um, laboratory sterilization test results, again, um, a lot of moving product, a lot of ensuring that um, standards are met and protocols are, are met as well. Uh, regulatory impact assessment, ensuring that we have correctly translated new regulations or regulation changes um, into our, our quality system. Do we have you know, all of our bases covered. How are we compliant across the board as directed by the new regulations? Um, and then our quality assurance systems, obviously, you know, we've talked a lot already about impacting the quality system and how we want that to be a minimal factor. Um, some of the, the more lower risks, so environmental monitoring records, um, so something that's not necessarily involved, involved with, with products, um, training records and master schedule systems. Um, so this gave us really a baseline of what our quality system looks like. We're able to do uh, a waterfall chart across the quality system and identify those specific areas. So next, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give an example of how we're using um, DocuSign in each of those areas. And it is an interesting case that each area um, uses DocuSign a little bit differently. So if we go to the next slide, yep. So the three areas were in our active release. So active release is essentially um, the monitoring and recording of the movement of our products across sites. Um, so we that might mean the product is manufactured at a manufacturing plant it then would move to a um, sterilization site and then off to a distribution center and then off to, to the customer. Um, so the, the docu there's a lot of documentation that we'll, we'll see on the next slide that we'll go into more detail. Um, the clinical area was another one. Lots of forms, lots of consent forms. Um, and then finally, regulatory. And one of those areas that I spoke about in terms of ensuring that we have fully assessed and we have accurately assessed the impact of new regulations. So the, for active release, um, won't go through all the boxes. I'll spare you guys um, that, that um, highlight of going through each step. But this was a really complex process. You can see multiple swim lanes. There's multiple um, boxes here. There's rework loops and decisions to be made. And what this is, again, is that movement of product from one site to another. And there were a number of different forms that were involved. Each step of the way, each site had a different form that had to be completed. So you might have um, a manufacturer completing their form that says, here's what's on my pallet, here's the batch numbers. And then it goes to a sterilization site. And they'll have their own form that they need to fill out that provides an overview. Um, they all need to be reviewed from incoming inspectors. Um, just lots of cooks in the kitchen, lots of documents, um, lots of opportunity to to get things wrong and to have um, errors within the documents. Um, so this was also high volume, right? We're we're shipping a lot of products. We go back to one of those first slides where you know where a patient is touching one of our products, you know every just about one second. That's a lot of products going out. Um, so heavily volume, you know, through here. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, um, this, this slide shows how DocuSign helped. So really what we were able to do is to take one, you know, 
DocuSign form and consolidate all of our paper forms into that one form. Um, we then had the ability to automate the chain of custody going through. So rather than forms having to be signed off, you know, wet signatures once the packages were received or once the shipments were received, um, everything was more proactive now. We were able to streamline the process, able to not cut out groups of people who were signer or, or the number of people involved. There's still a lot of people involved in this process, but able to streamline and able to plan better, right? So now the distribution centers or sterilization sites um, have more awareness of the timing of the shipments um, because they're getting electronic documents assigned before you know the shipments haven't even arrived. So they have their queue. They know what's ahead of them as opposed to to previous with the hard copy, they would get that form when the shipment arrives, so there's no advance notice. We will move into, I believe, clinical. We'll go to the next slide. Yep, so clinical um, is a different use case. The level of complexity is a lot lower. Um, with clinical, it was typically just a form with a few signatures or a few pieces of information. If we think about one of the more common uses, there was the consent form, right? So most of us have familiarity with what a consent form is. But if you're part of like a clinical trial, um, the physician will run you through kind of the, the risks and the overview of the trial, the protocols, um, and then you have to consent to it. Um, so really, it's a simple form. The catch, though, is that our forms would be sent to physician's office by email. They would be printed by the physician's office. They would have to capture the patient's information, fill it out by hand, um, or you know maybe electronic if it's a Word Word document. Uh, they would have to obtain a hard, you know, wet signature from the physician as well as the patient. Um, they would then have to scan it and send it back to Boston Scientific who would then manually record um, the information into another system. So really disparate system, really you know, manual. What DocuSign allowed was the, the full automation of this process. So the form lives within DocuSign now. It's sent to our uh, clinical sites um, and patients as well as physicians can provide electronic signatures um, and then the data can flow straight into our system. Right, so um, this was one of those examples where before in our active release in the manufacturing side, really complex, you know, we wanted to really ensure that we were streamlining a process in terms of um, providing some automation of workflow. Um, on the clinical side, it really is um, creating efficiencies and cutting out steps in the process. Once our folks in the clinical organization began to get their hands on DocuSign, uh, it, the, the use cases spread like fire. Um, it was just, it just took off. Um, people saw the value right away. They really had no desire to use manual forms or paper forms any longer. Anything that was in Word or Excel that we were setting off, um, they just started creating templates. They built right in and just became huge advocates of DocuSign. Um, so we have something around 18 different forms now that we're currently using um, within, within DocuSign for clinical uses. And you can see a number of them here. But again, this was one of those areas really simple. Um, you know, there, there's certainly some risk. Um, you know, if I went back to my, my risk levels, you know, most of these probably fall in a more medium area um, and even some of them low. But we determined that this was a really good area for us to implement because it was safer, right? So we had one of the more complex implementations or actually the other, the, the active release and then the one we'll talk about next were super complex. Clinical was easy. Clinical was one where it, it allowed us to create a, a really solid business case and marketing campaign for the use of DocuSign. Um, without a lot of effort. So now we'll talk about my favorite use case. Um, 
which is also one of the, the more complex sites. So it's in, in the regulatory process. So this is the detailed regulatory assessment, the DRA form, which essentially it is that reg assessment of impact to the business. So anytime there's a regulation change, um, our corporate regulatory group will do an initial impact on what they think it is to overall Boston Scientific. And then um, whichever division or divisions those regulations would impact, they do an internal assessment, right? So already we're getting two different groups with maybe differing opinion um, and interpretation of those regulations. Uh, but what we used was a basically a Microsoft Word template or a form that was 30 plus pages long had no real logic to it, was all question-based, and theoretically it was supposed to guide you through um, what, the, what the level of risk was of that, that new regulation. Uh, but really what happened is that 50, over 50% of the time, or almost 50% of the time that that form was filled out, there were errors and inaccuracies. Um, it wasn't clear what questions had to be answered. There was a lot of questions that were not relevant to um, the assessment, but there was no real good way of flagging which questions were not relevant. Um, so not only were there 30 pages, but there was a lot of back and forth conversations that would have to, to be taken in order to, um, to really complete these forms in a timely manner, and they take took a significant amount of time. The, this was one of those areas that we, we didn't initially have on our radar um, for DocuSign usage, um, but after you know, we've been, we had a relationship with DocuSign, we were in the process of rolling out to the two other areas, um, a need for a more controlled environment or more compliant um, tool um, arose very quickly um, and we, you know, we had conversations with our um, DocuSign reps and identified that DocuSign would be a solution for this. Um, so if we go to the next slide, what we were able to do, um, and I, I do like to joke that we, we did kind of break DocuSign a little bit in trying to fit this piece into it. Um, we took a very complex form, and, and what we wanted DocuSign to do was a little bit out of the box, or maybe a lot out of the box, but we wanted to use logic built within DocuSign in order to complete this. So, you know, if I'm thinking about certain sections, um, they provide, you know, based on my answers to those sections, I may see different uh, question sets. Um, we also wanted to ensure that someone could not skip a question. Right, if it was one that was required. Um, we needed a significant amount of, of different logic built into it because we wanted this process to be easier on the end user. We wanted really a powerful form where someone could go in and it would walk them through that risk assessment. It would navigate them in the right directions. Um, it's not really how the tool was intended to be used, which is why I said we kind of broke a couple things. There were some special features that needed to be pushed out to, uh, to everyone um, from the DocuSign perspective um, that allowed us to enable these features. Um, but at the end of the day, we now have DocuSign being leveraged for this document. Um, we've reduced errors um, there are, you know, there's the type of errors now where it's more inaccuracy because someone answered a question incorrectly um, rather than they missed it, um, and, you know, skipped it all together. Um, we do, in, in, you know, if they're missing questions or they're putting inaccuracies, it's lower risk questions now, right? So we are able to ensure that those that are the most important, most relevant questions uh, are always answered and they're answered accurately. Um, and they do have the ability now to, to go through and really use a more intelligent um, means to, 
to performing this risk assessment. It's also cut down on the number of conversations that happen back and forth between various groups, whether it's corporate or it's divisions or, you know, it's other functions. Um, so the, the sheer amount of time that it takes to complete the, the DRA form is significantly lower. So if we look at you know these these three areas, so the the active release, the clinical, the regulatory piece, it's okay. Now we've got DocuSign, we're using it. Our users are really happy. We're getting really good feedback. Um, what's the next step? You know, what does that mean in terms of dollars, right? Um, when we look at savings and put our business case together, um, you know, we're looking at over $4 million annually of savings between the three groups. A lot of the savings comes because it's high volume. Um, a lot on the reg side might come from, you know, meeting time. So this isn't necessarily hard dollars. There's a lot of efficiency gains and soft dollars here, but it's something where we were able to quantify um, what the savings is for each area. If we go to the next slide. So not only do we track um, dollars in terms of, of what was the benefit, but we're looking at time too. Um, so this was, was um, testing time that we did for uh, the active release process. You can see their old process, right? We're looking at uh, 27 minutes. Um, so that was a lot of those comparing of forms, having to go and obtain a signature, um, you know, fill out the, uh, fields manually rather than drop downs. Um, with DocuSign, we are able to automate that process. Again, we went from three forms down to one um, and really streamlined the process. So we went from 27 minutes that it, the cycle time was prior to DocuSign down to six minutes with DocuSign. So significant um, benefit gains. And, you know, when you're, you have volumes of, you know, about 25,000 um, runs a, a year, that time adds up significantly. So one of the, the other areas um, that I actually like to talk about the most is not only do we have a good story in terms of money and time, um, but if I go back to, to how I kicked off some of the, the early slides was, it truly did increase our compliance. Uh, using DocuSign allowed us to significantly reduce uh, GDP areas, errors. So, you know, reducing inaccuracies in our documentation. Um, we were able to ensure that our reg assessments were completed significantly more accurately. Um, so, DocuSign was seen as a, an enormous tool to increase our compliance, to strengthen our quality system, you know, to ensure that, again, we have the patient in mind and strong patient outcomes are always ever present. So one of the kind of, I don't, one of the, the issues that we've dealt with across the organization has been getting buy-in for an enterprise license. Um, we, we haven't been able to, to get the right influence in terms of integrating all of our divisions and functions onto to DocuSign. So what we've done is a bit of grassroots um, and really kind of word of mouth um, practice where, you know, we pick specific areas. So, you know, we, we talked about how we pick them. Um, we implement DocuSign, you know, and then we, we recognize success and we tell the story. And, you know, um, DocuSign really is starting to become um, a focal point of a lot of our operational excellence um, award platforms. So here, you know, we've been recognized within our regulatory group um, with getting their major achievement um, award in 2017. And then also from the quality side, um, received their top award as well um, the same year, again, for excellence in driving operational effectiveness, right? So this is what we use in order to tell our story internally 
and how we sell it to other places of business in order to to build additional use cases in other areas that may be on the fence with DocuSign and have heard a little bit about it, kind of know it by name, um, have used it because they got a mortgage or a loan or an application or something. Um, but this is really kind of our backbone for increasing our usage throughout the company. So some of our strong kind of successes, our best practices, um, really kind of hands-on leadership. Um, again, we there was no top-down here that said you need to use DocuSign, right? Um, this was more of a bottoms-up approach that we took. Um, so having point people throughout the functions, so having kind of the go-to people on the projects as well as um, at DocuSign really ensured that people got a really firm grasp on DocuSign and what it can deliver. Um, I can't say enough about our CSAs from DocuSign, our customer support architects. Um, they were there hand in hand. Uh, I know that there are a couple CSAs that know some of our Boston Scientific processes better than 99% of the people here at Boston Scientific. Um, they were so important in getting our processes. They, you know, they didn't just take requirements from us and then build that into the tool. They learned our processes. Um, they provided suggestions in terms of how we should do it. Um, really kind of they drove a lot of those activities, uh, you know, with, with us there. And um, I, I truly believe we wouldn't be as successful as we are today if it weren't for the, the CSA's uh, partnership. Um, you know, some of, again, those opportunities in CAFA and audit, that goes back to our compliance piece. Um, you know, we, we tend to look at projects and we look at ROI. We want to sure, ensure that projects have a certain ROI before funding. Um, you know, at, at Boston Scientific, again, the quality system is such a strong component. If we attach a compliance piece to that, um, then it's a huge benefit and, and it goes a long way and it you might make it easier to, to get funding and a green light for it. Um, for us, then, it was really kind of thinking outside the box in terms of thinking of DocuSign as a compliance driver as opposed to something where it's going to streamline my signature process. Um, and, you know, lastly, I'll talk about the communities of practice. So one of the things that, that is pretty prevalent across the, the Boston Scientific Quality System are these communities of practice within various um, knowledge areas. Uh, but what they represent are uh, SMEs from all of our sites. So we have one SME per site um, that meet on a regular basis. They share best practices. Um, they work on continuous improvement solutions together. Uh, really, it's a way to keep basically our, our knowledge experts at the sites who are using DocuSign um, engaged with one another throughout. And it really does share that the culture of best practice sharing. Um, we're able to come up with more use cases, more able to support one another, right? That's a big piece too. We don't have um, product support just on one or two admins, but really we have a collective group of people who um, can help uh, root cause for one another. So that was kind of some of the good. Now, you know, for those of you who are, are interested in DocuSign or looking for areas to leverage DocuSign, um, you know, we, we certainly had our share of bumps in the road. Um, it, it, it was not always smooth and, you know, there were definitely some, some good lessons learned. Um, one of the first things was, you know, it, it, every company goes through this and everyone's dealt with it in terms of, uh, you know, not having dedicated resources on a project, right? So you're giving someone who's already got a day job, you know, kind of a, a hobby project, um, to go and work on, well, you know, we quickly found out that, no, we need dedicated resources. It's going to take, you know, maybe it's 50% of someone's time, but it's not something that's, you know, 10. The other piece that has been really important is identifying a product owner. 
um, meaning you have someone that is responsible for DocuSign not only throughout um, planning and implementation in the project phases, but then after the project is you know done with implementation as well too. You have a long-term person, and it might switch over the, the course of that. But at least you have a designated product owner who owns a relationship, who who's kind of the primary contact with DocuSign, um, so that you can work out things like licensing and um, you know invoicing and stay up to date on updates, and then that product owner can share that information with the community of practice. Um, so that it's all coming from one source. Um, one of the pieces that we needed to do better was engaging our, our sites sooner in the process, um, especially um, our international sites. So we had kind of focused on more of a domestic, very kind of scoped pilot. Um, and that, that approach worked well. Uh, but there were certainly opportunities to engage our other sites sooner. They had some really great ideas. So again, being more holistic and comprehensive with the, the project teams, um, always a good idea. Um, proactive communication, just more upfront in terms of, you know, just getting the word about what DocuSign can do out there, right? Again, we're, we're taking our implementation approach from a more grassroots level. Um, the more advocates that we can get throughout the business, the more influence we'll have in hopefully one day getting to our uh, enterprise license. Um, so start simple to adopt faster. Um, so we, we took a blunt of this approach, right? Our active release was really, really complex um, and took a significant amount of time. It probably took us, I think, in total probably six to eight months um, to get up to speed on. Um, you know, this it was a high priority area. It was large volume, um, but not the easiest one to show quick wins. Um, that was really our clinical area, right? That was our quick win area where those are simple forms, easy to get into the system, easy to train on, and easy to, to go live on very quickly. Um, and kind of, uh, again, a, another one that is well known throughout project management is improve the process before rather than just um, taking your existing process and fitting a system around it, right? We, we had an opportunity to drive efficiencies into a few of our processes um, before putting them into DocuSign. So really kind of, you know, make sure you build those efficiencies first rather than having an aha moment two weeks before you go live that you should have consolidated forms into one. So I think that brings me to the end. Great. Thanks, Kevin. This is Sianna. I can take it from here. Um, thank you for sharing the story, the, your story again. The Life Sciences team at DocuSign loves hearing lots of scientific story and seeing these impactful results. It's definitely not every day that you see an enterprise taking on the automation of such highly regulated and convoluted processes to that level. So to close out the webinar today, I'd like to share a bit more perspective into the power of building a modern system of agreement in life sciences. The journey Boston Scientific has taken is definitely at the forefront of really realizing the benefits of doing so. Across our life science customers, we see the impactful areas where accelerating the completion of documents and agreements to be in these areas clinical operations, manufacturing and distribution, and commercialization, and patient engagement. Kevin shared some great success in automating agreements across their 18 plus clinical use cases, and of course, automating their entire chain of custody process, which is awesome. We've also worked with life science companies to integrate into solutions like Salesforce, for example, to modernize agreements across commercialization and patient, patient engagement processes as well. Time and quality are really critical across all of these areas. We know that delays ultimately mean that patients in need must wait longer for new treatments or the new products never even make it to market. So there's a lot on the line for life science companies and we see that manual processes really pose a particular threat. According to Faith Biopharma, 40% of R&D costs in life sciences are linked to paper-based business processes and they're costing companies billions of dollars a year. 
Now, if we think about the current state of systems at many life science companies, the odds are you're dealing with a mix of legacy systems. These are likely manual process or a mix of manual and digital processes that are creating a disjointed patient or customer experience across many departments and can also hinder employee productivity. Across these four stages of completing agreements, preparing, signing, acting on, and managing, we find there are multiple inefficiencies when relying on legacy systems. We have found that the cost of these legacy systems is quite significant across our customers. From wasting $77 per agreement to losing 21 days on average to complete one agreement. We also see on average that companies have one out of every five agreements completed with errors, which means more time going back and forth to correct those errors, or even worse, the document remains incorrect and can put the company at regulatory risk. So whether you're providing patient consent forms, quality inspections, or processing sales contracts, there are agreements everywhere. And with a legacy system of agreement, that means there are probably needless costs, delays, and maybe risks everywhere. We see industry leaders like Boston Scientific who are implementing a modern purpose-built system of agreement and seeing the impactful results of doing so. The DocuSign system of agreement platform is that technology foundation that can help automate processes across all departments. So again, from patient engagement to commercialization and things like legal. Implementing electronic signatures is really just the start of streamlining agreements across patients and employees. There's more you can do to improve how you prepare, act, sign, and manage those agreements. The last point I'd like to make before we open up for Q&A is to remind you of the savings Boston Scientific achieved with DocuSign. $4.4 million in annual savings, increased productivity by 78% and significantly eliminating GDP errors. These results demonstrate that when you not only digitize processes, but like Kevin said, improve and simplify them, you really can gain efficiencies and ultimately provide a better experience and keep the business moving forward. Thank you all for joining the webinar. I'll pass it back to Dan now to start our Q&A. Thanks, Yana, and thanks, Kevin, for giving us a peek under the hood on the journey that you and Boston Scientific took implementing DocuSign and, and improving your, your processes. So that was great to, to learn. We don't often get that opportunity. Throughout the presentation segment of the webinar, we have all heard and seen a lot of great information, and we've only scratched the surface on this complex system-wide initiative. And it is now time for our Q&A session. This is always a popular segment of our webinars. And we have some outstanding questions sent in from our attendees. Kevin, the first one is for you. How are you able to quantify your results? So the, the steps we really took was we went back and looked at you know, how much time are we spending um, obtaining signatures. Um, that was really the first step. So did a couple quick time studies and you know just put some estimates here and there. And then looked at our volume, right? So once we have our, our time studies, we look at, you know, I can go back to that slide that showed 27 minutes versus six, right? So right there, I've got 21 minutes of savings, apply, you know, an average um, hourly rate to that, multiply it by our volume, and there's our total savings. Excellent. Okay, I got another one for you, Kevin. And you touched a little bit about um, uh, executive buy-in. So in your case, how did you get the, the buy-in from the C-suite to implement these types of solutions? Great question. And a lot of it was sometimes the, the good and bad of being a quality system is when you do have a finding, right, so, or non-conformance, or you have new regulations like Part 11, there's a real need to do a correction or a preventative action. So we had a little bit of backing in terms of we needed an option to become compliant, right? So our VP and SVP of of quality were, were of course, easy advocates and supporters of DocuSign because it allowed us to be compliant with FDA Part 11. It also provided us with a tool that reduced audit exposure from, you know, those those outlook approvals. Once we had a some tangible benefit, once we were able to go and say, here's the benefit we're receiving, here's the efficiencies we were, we were receiving, we're able to to go to like the clinical areas, we're able to go to the regulatory areas and say, hey, we've identified these specific use cases. Um, 
here's the benefit that you can see from those. So really, it, it was convincing. It's, it's taken a lot of convincing. As mentioned, we're still on the journey to to try to, to influence all the, the C-suite for an enterprise license. Um, but it's kind of case by case and trying to build out, you know, really strong use cases in each area. Okay, very good. Sienna, I've got a question for you. Um, we all know that the cloud is a vast landscape of technology. Can you tell us uh, what some of the other cloud solutions are that DocuSign integrates with? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, our platform has actually over 350 pre-built integrations with applications and solutions that likely a lot of customers and life sciences have already invested in. Some of these include Salesforce, I mentioned, Viva, Workday, Fox, Microsoft, and Google. So that's just a sampling. Um, but these pre-built integrations are great, to, a great way to get most the most out of current solutions and then work well to layer DocuSign into existing workloads and processes. So we, we definitely recommend it to a lot of our customers. Great question. Excellent. Okay, Kevin, this next one is for you. How does your quality system interact with your CRM system? The CRM system would be a validated system, right? So it would be something that is has gone through the process of being looked at in terms of does it provide the right um, Part 11 compliance? Do we look at the records retention and all the pieces? It, it's not unlike most of our, our systems here at BSC where if we are incorporating a IT platform, whether it's CRM or otherwise, they do go through a validation system to ensure that A, they, they are compatible with the current components of the quality system, and, and B, that they can be incorporated with, with little to no um, harmful impact. Very good. Okay, another one for you, Kevin. An audience member wants to know, what are you doing with the completed envelopes? Are you moving the completed envelope and certificate out of DocuSign and storing them somewhere else? And are you using a DocuSign retention policy to delete those envelopes out of the DocuSign or are you using DocuSign as a repository? Yeah, that's a, a fantastic question. So today we store the envelopes outside of DocuSign. We store them, you know, on our one of our document retention platforms that we have as part of the quality system. And again, that just makes it a little bit stronger in terms of um, compliance to our quality system and controls that we have, storing it kind of on our own servers, ensuring that there's there's only one place. The the envelopes from a DocuSign retention, you know, on their site, we have them retained for one year through DocuSign. They're encrypted, that limits any um, risk of breach, but after a year, you know, they would be uh, scrubbed from the DocuSign system. And that's why, you know, that's part of the reason that we move them to our own system as well. Okay, well, uh, we're just about done with the q and A. I'm gonna throw Sienna a curveball here because I have a personal question here. I'm into a lot of different technologies. I mean, I love you know the Apple iWatch and and uh, Fitbits and uh, Alexa and uh, you know with Amazon Echo and and Google's appliances. Are are we still a long ways away from being able to tell these appliances uh, to authenticate our signature or or approved documents or things like that? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Obviously, um, with AI and um, devices and wearables like of that nature. Um, you know, it's kind of a hot topic. What I'd say is we're definitely not far away from it, right? Um, the, one of the main benefits of using DocuSign and um, our entire platform is the digitization of, of all of that data and agreements and, um, and the process. So I, I don't have the technical answer of how far um, I would guess that'd be above my my responsibility at the company for sure, um, but it's definitely something that at DocuSign we are always taking a look at of how to help customers improve, you know, their intelligence at their company and what they're trying to achieve. So it's definitely not far away and there's already the intersections happening. Outstanding. Well, that is all the time uh, for Q&A today and I encourage everybody in the audience to contact our experts after the webinar. They really would love to hear from you if you want to go into more detail about any of these topics that we talked about today. So if you still have a question or comment for our experts, just send an email to the address on the screen and we'll make sure that, that it gets to them. I hope you all enjoyed this event and have taken away some new insights. 
I'd like to once again thank our friends at DocuSign and Boston Scientific for partnering with us on a great event. And I'd also like to encourage you to look for future web seminars by visiting pharmavoice.com. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. The event is now over.